Welcome to the Extreme Broadband Engineering product installation training. In this session, we'll explain how to remote power the Data Plus amplifiers. In this session, we'll explain what is remote powering. We'll identify remote powering components, explain how to configure remote powering, and understand the importance of using the power inserter. Let's get started. What is remote powering? Remote powering is the ability to power the amplifier from any location where there's a cable and electrical outlet close together. Remote powering allows DC to travel on the same coaxial cable that carries RF, thus eliminating the need to run a dedicated power cable such as with local powering. So remote powering saves time and money. Let's take a look at what components are needed for remote powering. First we'll look at the power pack and power inserter. The power pack converts AC to 15 volts DC. All the Data Plus amplifiers use 15 volts DC. On the power pack, there's a mounting hole at the top that is used to secure the power pack to the AC outlet with a screw. This will prevent anyone from accidentally unplugging the power pack which would result in loss of power to the amplifier. The power pack comes with a loss of service tag installed. This is a warning that if the unit is unplugged, the cable service will be lost. There's a green LED, which is a visual indicator that the power pack is working and has 15 volts DC. The power inserter combines DC from the power pack with the RF and the drop, which enables DC to flow to the amplifier. The AC-DC power pack and power inserter are a team and work together. The power inserter has three ports. One port is labeled 2 power supply. This port is connected to the power pack and only passes DC. The port labeled 2 amplifier DC slash RF is connected to the cable going to the amplifier and passes both DC and RF. The port labeled 2TV slash modem RF output is connected to the end consumer device such as a set-top box or modem and only passes RF. The path between the two power supply port and the two amplifier DC slash RF port only passes DC. This path has high isolation and will block all other frequencies. The path between the two amplifier DC slash RF port and the two TV slash modem RF output port will only pass RF and will not allow a DC to pass through. This port has very low insertion loss to RF and loses less than 1 dB. Each of the Extreme Broadband Data Plus amplifiers has two remote powering options and the ports are identified with a label indicating remote power. On the IPA1111D, the remote powering ports are located on the far right and can be powered through the VOIP modem port or the RF output port. These ports are also used for RF and pass both RF and DC. The IPA1044D and the IPA1008D have two options for remote powering, either through the VOIP modem port or the RF output port number one and are located in the two lower left ports. Let's take a look at how remote powering works. Remote powering is the ability to power the amplifier from any location where there's a cable and electrical outlet close together. Typically this can be any location where cable outlets are located as the end consumer devices they need power to work. Let's look at how to configure remote powering from one of the outlets. In this example, we'll remote power from the bedroom number two outlet. First, we'll go to the amplifier location on the side of the house and configure the amplifier. In this example, 
We're using the IPA1044D Data Plus Amplifier. Since this is feeding a video service in bedroom number two, we'll be using a remote powering port located at RF output number one. If we were remote powering from an EMTA or modem location, the passive VOIP port would be used. The rest of the powering process is the same for both ports. In this example, connect the cable going to bedroom number two to output number one remote powering port. Included with the amplifier are two service loss tags. These tags are a warning that if the cable carrying DC is disconnected, the cable service will be lost. Wrap one of the service loss tags around the cable carrying DC power. Connect the rest of the cables and mount the data plus amplifier into the enclosure. Let's now configure the outlet location in bedroom number two. Connect the power inserters to power supply port to the power pack. Connect the cable from the wall plate to the power inserters to amplifier DC slash RF port. Connect the cable going to the customer premise equipment to the power inserters to TV slash modem RF output port. Install the other service loss tag onto the cable close to the connector connected to the power inserters to amplifier RF slash DC port. Next, plug the power pack into the AC outlet. Secure the power pack to the AC outlet using a screw through the mounting hole at the top of the power pack. DC now flows to the amplifier. The amplifier is now activated and the RF flows to all the outlets. The remote powering configuration is now complete. Let's look at the flexibility to power from any location with remote powering. With remote powering, you have the flexibility to power from any outlet location in the home. To remote power from bedroom number one, move the cable going to bedroom number one to RF output port number one, and install a service loss tag. At bedroom number one location, configure the power pack and power inserter the same as we did in our example. To remote power from the family room, move the cable going to the family room to RF output port number one and install a service loss tag. At the family room location, configure the power pack and power inserter the same as we did in our example. The VOIP modem port is configured for remote powering. To power from an EMTA or modem location that is connected to the passive data port, all that needs to be done at the amplifier is to install the service loss tag. At the EMTA modem location, configure the power pack and power inserter the same as we did in our example. Let's discuss the importance of using the power inserter when using remote powering. There may be times when you do not need all the outlets on a multi-output amplifier and a remote powering port is used just for powering. Even in this case, you'll need to use a power inserter. Let me explain why. Electromagnetic interference and radio frequency interference might penetrate the AC-DC power pack. The interference can pass through the F port and cause interference with the other ports of the amplifier or out to the system. 
The power insert is designed to block this interference and only passes the DC through. Always use a power inserter with every amplifier. In this example, we're showing the power pack connected directly to the passive powering port. The interference that could penetrate the power pack travels through the cable directly to the passive port. The interference will pass through the passive port to the input port where it can travel up the drop to the system. With the power inserter installed, it'll block any interference coming from the power pack. So always use a power inserter with every amplifier. And make sure to terminate the unused port on the power inserter. In this example, we're showing the power pack connected directly to the active RF output number one powering port. The interference that could penetrate the power pack travels through the cable directly to the active port. The interference will pass through the active port to the other RF ports where it can interfere with services on the other outlets in the home. With the power inserter installed, it'll block any interference coming from the power pack. Always use a power inserter with every amplifier. And again, terminate the unused port of the power inserter. Once all cables are installed, use a torque wrench to tighten all connections. Let's review what we've learned in this training on remote powering of the Data Plus amplifiers. We explained what remote powering is, identified remote powering components, demonstrated how to configure remote powering, and explain the importance of using the power inserter. Thank you for viewing this product installation training on remote powering of the Data Plus amplifiers. For additional training topics, see our website at www.extreme-broadband.com.